The road to the Final Four in San Antonio is officially upon us. It's time to break it all down and figure out who's going to get there talking about the South. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, CBSSports.com's college basketball columnist Gary Parrish, and of course CBS Sports' is Clark Kellogg. And guys, Memphis the one seed, you got Texas the two. I know we have differing opinions on this. <laughs> if it gets to that point in the regional final, Texas will be playing in Houston. I mean, come on, it's not fair to Memphis and again. I can tell you this, John Calipari doesn't think it's fair to Memphis. <laughs> they went, had to play UCLA and Oakland two years ago when they were the one. Last year they were the two. They had to play a lower seed, Texas A&M, in San Antonio. Now, looks like they're going to have to deal with Texas and Houston. You can say it's neutral court all you want. There's nothing neutral about playing Texas and Houston. Well, if you're going to break through that elite eight hurdle that Memphis has not been able to break through the last two years, sometimes you got to do it through the most adverse circumstances. I think about the Super Bowl two years ago, the Indianapolis Colts win. The year before, everything's laid out for them. They're supposed to get it done. Tragedy strikes, adversity. Then they have to go through all of that, and that's the year they win the Super Bowl. So sometimes you've got to go through some significant turbulence in order to get to where you want to get to, and Memphis has the ability to be able to do that. In the NBA, Pistons had to get through the Celtics. The Bulls and Jordan had to get through the Pistons. I mean, I mean it happens. Oh, yeah. you got to get through that hump. Memphis has been to two straight regional finals. Let's take a look at the brackets and see at least the beginning part of this. Memphis against Texas Arlington, UT Arlington in the, for the first time in school history. Mississippi State and Rick Stansberry, uh, traditionally underachieved in the tournament, but they get Oregon, a team that eh, some people thought didn't deserve to be in, but they're there as a nine seed, Gary. Let's pretend Mississippi State gets out of that first game. I had a coach just in a random conversation this year say, you know who could give Memphis a lot of problems if they ever had to play him? I said, who? He said, Mississippi State. Mm. So that'd be interesting. Did he say why? I think probably because of Jamont Gordon and the shot they're blocker big, Bernardo. And they're yeah. Long, yeah. And they're, they're similar to Memphis in yeah. that they got big, long athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're very mm -hmm. good. They can shoot the ball well as well. Move on down here. Michigan State has been a team, Clark, that's been hot or cold. It goes as Drew Neitzel goes. He played well in the Big Ten tournament. We'll see if it carries over. Temple's a team that won the A-10 tournament. And then Pittsburgh, winner of the Big East tournament. Yeah, you've got some terrific teams. Pittsburgh playing as well as anybody in the country. Oral Roberts is a nice team. They've got a player there in Robert Jarvis who comes off the bench. He's a little dynamo. So it's interesting. That'll be an interesting matchup, although Pittsburgh, I, I would give the advantage there. Michigan State, as you mentioned, Jason, hot and cold. But you can't discount the experience of Tom yep. Izzo. And when this team has played well, it's shown that it can play with anybody. Actually had Wisconsin on the ropes in the Big Ten semifinals and kind of let it get away. So I would keep an eye on Michigan State. They might get it right for, for a tournament run. Last time they were a five seed, they made the Final Four back in 2005. Let's keep it going here in the South Region, Mark. There's a lot of big names here in this pod. Marquette, <laughs> Kentucky, Stanford, and Cornell. You're going to see these in Anaheim on Thursday. Uh, the Lopez brothers against the Big Red. Big twins, Big Red. <laughs> There's a lot of big names, and the Lopez num uh, twins are obviously big, but the rest of the uh, pod... Kentucky, no Patrick Patterson, not that big anymore. Marquette, guard-oriented team. Cornell's an Ivy League school. So Stanford's got two uh, big guys better than the rest of the whole big guys in the entire pod. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do like Marquette, folks, here's a number for you. They've lost in, each, in the first round in each of the last two years. So maybe they're due. I know we've talked about that. Let's move to the last four teams in the South region. Miami back in the tournament for the first time since 2002 against St. Mary's, a team that has beaten a lot of schools throughout the year. And then Texas, Austin P. Those games will be played in Little Rock on Friday, Clark. Yeah, I like Texas. I mean, when you think about DJ Augustine and Damian James and certainly Connor Atchley and A.J. Abrams, I mean, this is a really, really high-level basketball team. I wouldn't be surprised to see that team get to the Final Four. I mean, they're that good. The matchups you consider, um, I, I just think Texas is playing at a really high level right now. And um, when you've got a point guard that can run the show like DJ can, you always have a chance to, to make a strong run. And the tournament, as we always talk about, is who's got the best guards and then maybe the best combination of guards and forwards. But the one game in this one that seems to be the most hotly contested, people that like the upset, people like Temple to beat Michigan State. They haven't been in the tournament since 2001. That was under John Chaney. But they were an 11 seed that time. They made it to the Elite Eight. Here is a 12 seed under Fran Dunphy. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, matchup in the first round. It's not a bad pick because Michigan State's been all over the place this year. They look good one day, look terrible two days later, but uh, I have a hard time picking against Tom Izzo. That guy's <laughs> Once the tournament starts, that guy's pretty good. Yeah, four Final Fours. Uh, Clark, when you look at Pittsburgh, who's also up in that end of the, of the bracket, it's a team that is coming off four wins in four days, Louisville, Marquette, Georgetown. Is there any team that's coming into the tournament hotter than the Panthers? No, I don't think so. Not only are they hot, but they're getting healthy. They actually are as healthy as they've been. They lost Mike Cook, 
Cook for the season, lost LeVance Fields for a while, but LeVance Fields is back. And while they were dealing with the injury, some other players started to step up and gain some confidence and experience. And now you've got a cohesive unit that has some experience, that has added some pieces, that has gained some confidence. There's no more dangerous team than those kind of ingredients coming together and they're at the right tough. time. Oh, yeah, they're hard. That's your they're hard. Oh, yeah, they're tough, hard. They come guys. at you. They come at you. They, they don't let tough. up. They but, don't let up. But Memphis is tough, too. So if that gets to the point in the Sweet 16, it'll be very interesting to see Memphis and Pittsburgh. And don't forget, if that becomes a matchup, you can see it on March Madness On Demand. It is back every single game of the NCAA tournament live online for free. Avoid the lines on game day by signing up for your free VIP pass now at NCAA.com. Can't wait for Thursday to get here. Can't wait for Tuesday. Opening round game, folks. Look forward to that, too. Gary Parrish, Clark Kellogg. I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.